Yeah, let's let's get started with with Beverly Hills. So, um, off the top, I just like one of the things that really stood out to me about Beverly Hills was how this was like visually constructed. This episode, I thought it was really interesting that it started off with the you know the the shopping trip and the wine tasting trip, and that was all so like colorful and this actual. Uh, dinner that they have they have like graded the color in such a like very saturated way and there's like a bloom effect on the lighting and as we watch this episode progress it transitions to like a grayscale. like the next the next like core piece of this episode is the conversation between dorit and pk and there is still like some hints of color in that in their apartment but it's definitely a lot like it's a lot grayer. It's it's a lot more neutral. And then by the time we get to the end of this episode where they're doing the celebration of light, everyone is in black. It's in a dark bar. And I just thought that this, the way it, it had to be deliberate, the way that they constructed this, because they obviously graded the color in the, in the opening scene at the dinner. Like that was definitely uh, exaggerated the way that the, it was color graded and the way that it was presented with this with this glow. And to me, it really hit on the scene on the core theme of this season of Beverly Hills or one of the core themes of this season of Beverly Hills, which is transition to me. We're seeing like this transition that Sutton is making into the dating world. We're seeing this transition that Erica is making based on her new financial situation and trying to really find her footing again we're seeing a transition within like kyle's relationship with mo and and now morgan and we're seeing like garcelle preparing for this transition with with her kids going up and this um to see that kind of manifested in a visual way throughout this episode where we've got this this gradient and this transition in tone i thought was a really like compelling deliberate choice on the part of the editors and and the producers Wow. That is very cool. I did not notice that at all. I'm so fascinated by the things that you take away from this. I did notice the high contrast, very like bright, sunny first scene. I was commenting to my husband. I'm like, oh my God, it's just so sunny in California. It seems obnoxious to me. Uh, so I oh, did, yeah. <laughs> I did notice that. I was like, God, it's just so bright and happy there. It's not my vibe. <laughs> so that one was definitely <laughs> obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is very interesting. I like it. Oh my gosh. I'm yeah, so I, I I found it like really really compelling. Um, and yeah, so let let's talk about that that first scene. What were, what were your thoughts on it? Aside from it being a little <laughs> too cheery. <laughs> I mean, it was fun. It was like, obviously they really hammered in like, we're finally getting along. This is just so good. Oh, and like everyone had a little, you know, confession or moment saying that. And it was cute. It was nice. Um, I liked Sutton getting a little wild and doing some weird physical comedy with bodies. Uh, <laughs> she's <Yeah>. fun. <laughs> I always love Sutton. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I I thought it was enjoyable. It was nice to see like a fun game for once. the The game was not just like uh, a deliberate mechanic for getting drama out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it still was a deliberate mechanic to like create a fun environment because they needed this like this release they needed to set up this like this new foundation of people being able to have fun with each other and not take each other seriously so that we can use that as a baseline for whatever drama comes within the the rest of this season so i really liked that i like that it was framed as a birthday party like bringing forward this idea of like rebirth because it did feel like a renewal on these relationships now we've got a little bit of intrigue to try to get an understanding of what actually was reset and what was just us having having fun um i also for there's something about crystal that i have found really like magnetic this season she's not really doing much but i feel like she's a lot more comfortable in front of the camera i think in her past two seasons she has come across a little rigid and um 
I was surprised to see her back for a third season, frankly, because I don't think that she was adding much to the dynamic, but she seems a lot more comfortable. And I feel like we're getting a lot more of her um, personality this season. It wasn't showcased a lot in this episode, but we did see her like having, she was like clearly like a happy drunk type, you know, just a little tipsy at the the dinner and having, having fun. And so it was nice to see her kind of let loose and like see her letting her guard down. And you could see it in, in her body language. It was like communicating this, this, um, uh, this confidence in, in front of the camera. So I, I like that o- overall, you know, there wasn't a lot to this scene in terms of the, the drama, but I think that it was like, in terms of like utility and form, I thought that it was a, a really important scene. Yeah. Set things up for sure. I thought, I mean, it's, it was a nice trip. I think it's funny that like, is her name? Anne Marie is going on a birthday trip with like women. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know. But it's reality TV, so you <laughs> yeah. gotta you gotta force a couple things, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Suspend your disbelief. <laughs> uh, what other highlights did you have from this episode? Um, well, I guess keeping on that trip, I was interested in learning about Kyle's shopping addiction, because especially since she's just dropped one potential addict- addiction or addictive substance from her life. <laughs> uh, so I yeah. found that. I mean, everyone has their addictions, especially if you're really rich, you can uh, buy a lot of stuff. But though lots of people that are not really rich have shopping addictions too, I hear. Uh, So I found that interesting, buying something every day, even at a gas station, because she just loves it. (laughs) That's uh, that's interesting. I didn't like immediately pick up on that. But this idea of her substituting a previous like addictive substance with another addiction is really interesting because she's also substituting out her relationship with more uh, Mauricio with this relationship that she's got with uh, Morgan. So that is, uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting dynamic to watch for sure. Mm-hmm. And then as far as the moving into the PK and Dorit scene, I'm trying to like decide if I appreciate these kind of scenes. I thought it was a good scene because it was, it felt pretty authentic as far as a like, reality TV marriage counseling session. Was that person a counselor or who was she? I didn't even catch that. Yeah, she was like a therapist or something like okay. that. I'm not entirely sure. She didn't seem that engaged in the conversation, but whatever, maybe that's good. But anyway, I thought it was funny that PK just said like, I don't think a lot of your PTSD is PTSD. It's just being obnoxious. That was funny. <laughs> um, and I, But I thought it was a real, uh, like I thought it was fairly authentic and felt, felt like they were kind of communicating about their issues. The thing that I'm not sure about is, do I want this content on these shows? Personally, I watch this for escapism and it feel like I, I feel like they're really leaning into, as I kind of mentioned before, they're really leaning into the, marriage, monogamous marriage is really hard. And here's the nitty gritty of what couples go through. And I'm like, I'm not looking for that content. I have that in my own life mm. enough. Like we I want some escapism <laughs> here. So I'm interested in your opinion on that scene and also just the general trend, I think, towards this content. Like it's relatable content, but I don't know if I want relatable content on these shows. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I personally like I don't think that this scene was the most enjoyable that I had some like takeaways from it, but overall I didn't think it was the most um, shining example of this type of scene that we have seen, you know, as you said, increasingly recently over the the recent years. Um, I, I do appreciate this. Like one of the things that I love about reality TV personally um is less like the escapism aspect of it. But I do agree that that is important. But the fact that on reality TV, I think you have the opportunity to get fuller pictures of characters than you do in like other narrative programming. But I I think that reality TV, you have characters that are just so much more three dimensional than you could ever write in a fictional narrative. I, they're influenced by things in so many more subtle ways that, um, that would seem maybe unimportant in a fictional setting, but ultimately it does like play into their decision-making and how they operate and navigate through the world. And I think it's just a, yeah, you, you have more real characters, even if they are exaggerated from their own personal. So I, when you see what is like influencing their behavior 
and you get a snippet of what they're going through at home, I think that that does add something to this. But I agree if you're going to watch it and um, and it's like you're looking to get escapism, then that is something that, you know, would be an unwelcome addition. <laughs> yeah, I'm torn. I see it both ways. <laughs> Yeah, I think like one thing that I thought was interesting about this scene was how they cut the therapist into it. Because like you said, she was not any of her interaction was like very minimal in how they showed this. She seemed like she was just like sitting there laughing at jokes and like (laughs) not really um, trying to drive at anything specifically. They just it made it look like they were able to work this out all on their own and that um you know that she wasn't necessary to that process so i thought it was interesting that they would present it that way and uh to me it kind of gave this uh this vibe of oh they're going to be fine because they have the tools already in their back pocket to work these situations out on their own um i don't know if that's what they were intentionally trying to communicate but that's what it like it it communicated to me cool did you have any other highlights from beverly hills Mm. Yeah, um, Anne-Marie shouldn't be blowing out her own candles. We don't do that post-COVID in this world. (laughs) That's my last thought. That's disgusting. But I guess they were licking toes at that lunch, so that's the least of their worries. So never mind. (laughs) Yeah, well, if if you've got a a, a, a non-thin esophagus, you got to use it. You (laughs) got to flex it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think we covered most of the things that I wanted to talk about in in this episode. I want to touch a little bit about this event at the end. And um, Anne-Marie is really like doing a lot. And it does come across like really forced. I don't think that she's a natural fit for this show, but she's making stuff kind of happen. What I'm finding most interesting is when we see her and and Crystal because Crystal was like I said a very rigid character for two seasons and so when we got that small little scene where they're at the table and Anne Marie is like brings up the eating disorder and then Crystal kind of calls her on it. It gave me like a little bit of a baseline to compare like Crystal's growth as a TV personality against compared to where Anne Marie is now, because, you know, Crystal was confident and was able to be like, no, you, you said that first. Like I, I didn't say eating disorder. You did. Um, So yeah, I, I think that she is serving a purpose here just like for comparison, but what she's trying to do with Sutton is just like not working. I'm not like interested in this at all. It's not this smoking gun that she thinks it is. Um, It's it's just like a really bizarre choice. She's like, not to change the subject, but Sutton's esophagus. I'm like, Dude, that is the most yeah. not <laughs> chill s- subject change you could ever <laughs> try to pull off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one wants to talk about that, as Garcelle was saying. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, did you have any small weird highlights that you wanted to call out? Um, yeah, on the note of that conversation, I thought it was extremely weird that a housewife has finally used the term gaslighting correctly. Congratulations, Crystal. Yeah. I hope I'm right. I hope I know what yeah. gaslighting is, honestly. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure she used it. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she said that she didn't need a dictionary for it, too. She didn't need to look it up in her medical dictionary, which was a great line. <laughs> <laughs> or any dictionary, because it's, it's yeah, not highly understood. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't have anything weird that I wanted to call out with this. So let's 